Hey everybody, it's George the Tech, and I've wanted to do this demo for a while, not just for you guys, but for me. I've got someone here who is a lover of the RME Total Mix uh, based audio mixing system and knows it quite well. And so Jerry Pelletier was nice enough to take time out of his day <laughs> to do a demo uh, with me and capture this for you guys and put it up so everybody can feel more comfortable again, including me, to start using more of the RME type equipment out there, like the Fireface UCX, as Jerry has, even the Babyface, which is a little bit stripped down version, but similar, and just feel more comfortable with, with what this mixer can do. So, Jerry, how are you doing today? Great. It's, uh, it's good to see you again, George. Give us a little rundown on some of the, the workflows that you found that the RME makes easier for you and why you've chosen to use the RME Total Mix over the Apollo console, because you have both, right? You have a hybrid system. Yeah, uh, and because I do like the Apollo and all of the plugins that it offers. It's just incredible. Um, and I know that I've worked with you in the past to try to solve some of the issues with the Apollo, but the thing is, is that... It, you could route everything, but if I ever had an issue, I'd be stuck because I didn't know how I couldn't go with that deep in the weeds with the, the Apollo and all the routing that you did. I would just be stuck unless I got a hold of you. And the Apollo um, has its share of driver uh, weird behaviors with certain apps like uh, name, I'll, I'll, I'll call out Zoom since we're using it. <laughs> it has sometimes really weird things with Zoom. So you've got several what I would call presets. They call them snapshots. Yep. Um, so give me a little uh, tour of, of how your setup works and, and also explain kind of the flow of how this interface works because there's a lot going on here in this window. So Yeah, I think we probably lost about 15 people already that all you, you take one look at this, you can go, I'm out of here. <laughs> it's a little intimidating at first. So so yeah, so just give an idea of the flow and, and how the this screen is laid out. What's going on here? Well, uh, like any program that you buy, whether it's Excel or, or Microsoft Word, those programs do so much more than what you'll ever use. You never use all of the features. And that's the same thing with this mixer. Although this mixer has some uh, uh, very good value to voiceover. There's a little bit of a learning curve. Uh, and we'll kind of go through that for you right now. You see all those, those inputs. I don't use hardly any of them. I only use three. This is where the Apollo comes in. And I have two microphones in the booth, a 416 and a U87. Um, so the Apollo is uh, changed to a line output, and it comes into the Fireface under channel one. What's good about that is both of my microphones then can be heard on Skype, Zoom, uh, anything, because it only picks up channel one. Right. Uh, so you're using an issue the Fireface sometime. really as a, a mixer signal router. Right. And the Apollo is your preamp. And the RME is so clean and transparent. There's no added color, noise nothing it's just yeah and it, they're absolutely bulletproof i've never ever had an issue i use the uh, fireface ucx um, mm -hmm. which is the rack mountable version and i've actually bought two for redundancy in case something sure. breaks yeah. and i've never pulled the other one out it's brand new in the box uh <laughs> in the closet and just to be clear i mean you don't have to use it the way jerry's using it. you could use the the ucx has preamps correct Yes, and so let's let's get into the weeds. This is the, the, the top row are all your inputs that you have. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these are digital over here. And in mm -hmm. fact, if you want to get rid of them, there's a way you can just get them off your screen completely so it doesn't confuse you. Um, so these are your inputs. So I have the Apollo, which is my two microphones coming into it. I also have a, a digital uh, Telos phone uh, hybrid. And I mean, yes, I still have the ISDN as well. It's there. It's not yeah. getting used that much, but it's there. Uh, I use it uh, every month. I have I have three clients that uh, use it every month, so awesome. um, uh, I still use it. But uh, you know, when the day comes when I when I won't use it, I'll use it as a doorstop. <laughs> so the, the the so that's what all these inputs. These are all your inputs. Oh, you got it up there. <laughs> There's a couple zephyrs right there. <laughs> and then this is just the computer playback. This is the my on my iMac, and then down below is the key to this whole mixer because um, this is how you route things. So as you can see, I have my headphones highlighted right now. Mm -hmm. And when the headphones are highlighted, um, it will show you that this is actually uh, analog one and two. This is speakers are three and four, and the ISDN and the phone are uh, five and six. Mm -hmm. 
So when I highlight the headphone, you'll see up here, it says you're talking about analog one and two. So everything that I have up here is what I'm hearing in the headphones. Mm -hmm. So I could hear the person on the ISDN or the phone, or the, actually the phone, I just, I bring it up here mm -hmm. so I could hear that. Um, but see, and then when I go to speakers, this is what's playing on the speakers right now, which is nothing. And you don't want any feedback of right. the computer. And right. then the ISDN and uh, the ISDN and phone gets my microphone as their feed. This is what the ISDN hears. Mm -hmm. So every right time you highlight that, yeah, every time you highlight that, you can set up the different settings. You can see the the uh, sliders moving around. Mm -hmm. And once you have it set up for a particular session that you want to do, like like if you look over here on the uh, right side, you'll see I say I have an ISDN setting, and when I press that, it sets up all the mix minuses. So that the ISDN doesn't hear when I have this up, the IS this isn't up, so I, I don't want to feed ISDN to ISDN. Right. All I want them to get is my voice. Mm -hmm. But you can still hear it because remember, right now all those faders on the top level are controlling what goes to the Zephyr. But when he clicks on HP at the bottom, the HP channel, now those faders are controlling what goes to the headphones. Correct. That's the key. It's getting used to that way of working mm -hmm. yeah and once you realize that when you it, it, it all has to do with this bottom layer down here and then when you click on it that's what's that's what's controlling those those speakers isdn phone and and the headphones and then you can move everything around once you have everything set you can actually save it you can click on this right here yeah see when i when i went out of the skype thing it eliminated my microphone to you um, and if I hit any of these other ones, uh, uh, the speakers might come on and it will get a lot of feedback. But actually, so you could ju just click on like mix seven and you could hit store and you could actually name it whatever you want. And those settings are always saved. Now, the, the cool thing about this is I can go to this next one, which is Skype uh, Source Connect Playback, which is the feature that if you recorded something and they say, can I hear that? Then I have it set up. It's just a simple button down here that says loop back. Mm -hmm. But you'll see when I press this, everything will stay the same, but that loopback button will come on. Mm -hmm. There it is. So whenever they want to hear something, I'll just, you know, go back on the uh, Adobe Audition and play it back for them. Then I'll go back to this and I can, we can still communicate and I can record. Yeah, the reason you use it temporarily is like, it, as Jerry said, if when he turns on loopback mode, and this is not unique to RME, anything that has technically a loopback, um, what it's doing is literally sending back out what comes in so if uh when i speak i would hear a little bit of a loop back of myself coming back to me now right. zoom is doing its best skype zoom those things have echo cancellation and they do a good job but not perfect so the uh, person on the far end if loop back is left on they would hear a little bit of them echoing back to themselves which isn't ideal so that's why you use it temporarily you just turn it on when needed. Can you show us how that loopback is configured? Is it literally just a button? You know, it's just a button. It There's no configuring to it. Just really, a button. Really? Yep. Turn it on and off. And the other thing is that if somebody, uh, uh, if you recommend this to somebody, again, they would have to, whatever input one is, whatever is plugged in, they have usually the, the baby face has two mic inputs. Mm -hmm. Well, if you plugged into mic two, uh, source connect zoom, it's not going to hear it. Mm -hmm. Still routing to mic one input. Is there anything, some programs have what they would call an aux send or something like that. Can you, can you force it, a uh, channel coming into mic two to record on channel one? Is that well, possible? then we can get into the weeds a little bit here because what's nice about this and the baby face is when you click on, uh, there's some settings that you can go here mm -hmm. and here's your effects send. Uh huh. So okay. there is that. Um, so I've dumbed place? it down. So mm -hmm. I don't ever have to do that. <laughs> right, right, right. And uh, I know on mine, there's a little bit of an EQ for every channel. Right. And there's also uh, some processing, which I don't use. And I don't use the EQ either, because you can see there's a low, uh, like a low cut. high pass filter, yeah. low cut. High yeah. pass, yeah. And then the EQ button is not engaged here either. Right. So I don't use any of the processing uh, here. And so but yeah. it's, it, it is available, you know, because I, all my processing is done on the Apollo. Right. Yeah. You have to have the UCX, I believe, to have that dynamic stuff. I think the EQ is available on the baby face, but not the dynamic stuff. 
The uh, Babyface comes with uh, a plug-in bundle, but the plug-in bundle is mainly for like guitarists, and, and it's not for voiceover sure. people, right? Sure. Uh, you have a three-band EQ, a low-cut filter, and a reverb and echo on the Babyface. Gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. The, the little wrench. We click on that. Yeah. Uh, I know what that. Does. Okay, so that lets you get into the um, the actual gain trim of the mic, right? Yeah, which is this is your input right here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the one button right above it, that's the mystery to me because I never read the manual. <laughs> this is the test. What is the T above the wrench? Do you know what that does? Oh, uh, that that's also uh, your like an effects send. See it? It moving? Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's a separate, a whole separate level, you know, to to engage it and mm -hmm. and and do an effect send. Well, I think that's that 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 loop back is what <laughs> threw me for a loop. I had no idea on how how straightforward it actually is to to use that loopback mode. Um, and when you click loopback, you want to make sure that headphones is what's selected, correct? You know, I, I, I know that it's, it's also over here, and right. it's also over here. Right. So uh, I'm thinking that any one of those three will, will actually do the, the loopback feature. But you wouldn't necessarily want it on correct. other things. You, don't, right. you definitely wouldn't want to send back uh, an ISDN line. And you right, want to, to them. Exactly. Right, right. So it's just for the headphone. What's coming to your headphones being sent right back out so that the listener can hear what you hear is basically what that is, right? So if you wanted to clean this up mm -hmm. and not have anything there that you didn't need to use, I would mm -hmm. go over here to click Options, mm -hmm. Channel Layout, and you see all these, all yeah, of these. Like <laughs> Digital, which we never right so these are the inputs then you have playback and then you have your outputs right um but right now this screen that you're looking at is uh, uh the top layer is the inputs and if we want to hide it we can we can hide it over here in the mixer right yeah it'll it'll take it off this so but the one thing you have to remember is that you can hide them but you have to go back here um uh to make sure that the levels are down because they're still live True, true. All you're doing you have is to make sure that all those you, levels are down. There. Yeah. Yeah. So if I click OK, they're gone off the screen. <laughs> That's a good so point. So that yeah. really, you can really clean it up. There'd be a lot less. All of these faders down here in the middle, I don't, none of them I use. I could clean all that up. So it would really simplify the look uh, and make people feel more comfortable by just hiding those things. And to go back and uh, change it back again, we would just highlight. Yeah. And take it off of Uncheck. that. Yeah, yeah. And they're all back. That's a good interface. That's good. Yeah, I think See, one then, thing that stymies me sometimes is, and it's just a, it's just a design thing. The label it says hardware inputs is below the hardware inputs. My brain wants it to be on top of them, right? <laughs> so I'll see that, and it, and it, and I have to flip. No, no, no. That's what's the hardware inputs is what uh, is what's above the label. It says hardware inputs, not what's below. And you can change so. that to anything that you want. Just double click on it. Oh, I wanted. To add, yeah, obviously you've customized it. We would call those scribble strips. You can scribble strips. You can give them their I like own that. name. Yeah, scribble yeah. strips to That's, everything. To that everything. Is really nice. So you, oh, even there. Yeah, everything Brilliant. all the way down here. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, that's a real limitation in Apollo. You can you can name the channels at the bottom, but you can't name really anything else. You can't name any sends or other. You know, there, there's definitely a limitation there. That's that's a big deal. So when you clean everything up like I did before and remove yeah. a lot of different things, you can actually take then a layout preset and store that, so that if if something ever came up like this and you're like, well, that's not my screen, you just you go down to layout one and you actually change the name of it. To whatever you want to call it and just right. hit that button and your your home screen would come back up with all those things gone and only the things you need up there gotcha yeah i wasn't aware what the layout the difference between the layout preset uh, recall and the snapshot recall was got it that makes a lot of sense last thing i'm looking at here is main control room and i see it's down and there's no signal there so where are why is that a different thing from speakers you know um, I, I don't know what that's for. I think that if uh, you were sending all of this mix to a main control room somewhere else, gotcha. You could you could send your mix. I mean, there there's so many things on this. If you if you've ever been to a recording studio, you can link um, 
uh, different output faders. Right. You can link them and you can do that here as well. You can yeah. get into the weeds on this thing and link faders and, and sure. have all those presets. And sure. um, so I, I don't get in that far because I don't use it. So um, yeah. Yeah. Cause you're, you're technically not in a control room. You're technically in a production room. So you don't want the control room to hear absolutely everything through the speakers. For example, you don't want the you don't want your microphone right. to come bellowing out of your speakers, right? So that's a that's a good point of why you wouldn't need to use that. So physically on the back of the unit, you have your speakers plugged into line outs three, four, instead of control room monitor left, right, or something like that. Right, right. Got it. And that's I a, split I split the output of uh four, uh three and four, five and six. One goes to the ISDN, one goes mm -hmm. to the uh, phone hybrid. Gotcha, yeah. And, you, and you can, you're sending the same signal to both, obviously, because you're just sending a, a microphone signal to Correct. them. Correct. Well, that, I think that demystifies it quite a bit. Um, that would de definitely make me feel a lot less intimidated about setting this up myself or showing somebody else how to set it up, maybe someone who hasn't gotten to see this video. This is helpful. I'm, I'm going to be a lot less hesitant to recommend um, the, the RMA, RME stuff after seeing this. So I yeah, really just appreciate a, it. Just your top is your input. Um, the middle is your computer and the bottom are whatever you connect. I know that the, uh, the baby face only has really two outputs, I think a headphone and then like the monitor outputs, uh, right. where I have a few more on the, uh, UCX. Yeah. The UCX is if you really have a more feature rich studio, if you do still have physical outboard gear, like a phone patch, hybrid, ISDN, et cetera, you really need the extra power, the extra outputs of the UCX. But if you are just a single mic pair of headphones or headphone mic monitor speaker setup, and that's all you ever do, then you could probably be fine with the baby face, I would imagine. Yeah, especially on the road. Yeah, definitely a great travel solution for the road. And I've never had an issue with them. They're rock solid, and they are just really clean and transparent. They are known for that. They are known for good, very good drivers, reliability. Um, have you ever needed to get support from them? How's their support? No, I, the only time I had to uh, call back down, Jeff is the guy down in Miami for RME. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I upgraded to Catalina, um, there were mm -hmm. just some new things, you know, that you have to yep. go back and you have to allow stuff. certain things yeah, to be. Yeah, lots of allowing and permissions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he kind of walked me through that and that was that was it. Yeah, well, you weren't alone. I mean, everybody that upgraded to Catalina went through that growing pain. And then right. and now Big Sur, uh, which I have on my new Max, you know, it's, it hasn't gone away. You still have to go through a <laughs> lot permission. of permissions. Yeah, but um, <laughs> anyway, thanks again, Jerry. I really appreciate your time. And um, anybody needing help, um, would you be willing to uh, exchange oh, yeah. an email with somebody if they need it? Sure. Mine is uh, just uh, jerry at jerrypelletier.com. Awesome. And then, of course, if you if you really want a real handhold from top to bottom to really configure everything, dial it in for your setup and um, obviously reach out to me, George, uh, at georgethe.tech and head over to georgethe.tech for all the different types of services that I provide uh, virtually, remotely to folks all around the world, really. Anyway, thanks again, Jerry. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll talk to you guys later. Stay safe.